There's a few things I can tell you guys about Brad Gerstner. One, he probably has a bigger brain than you. And two, he probably owns more Tesla stock than you. Very publicly, maybe six or so months ago, announced that he'd sold all of his Uber stock and loaded up on Tesla. I suggested at the time, perhaps he sees what Tesla's doing with autonomy, understands the distinction and why companies like Uber are in big trouble when Tesla widely scales their robotaxi fleet, in essence, with an over-the-air software update. Well, he's back talking Tesla. Brad, the last time we were together was out in San Francisco. You made headlines, of course, when you told us exclusively that you had sold Uber and that you had bought Tesla, thinking that the game had changed in the big picture. I'm wondering what you think about that now, if your position still exists. Obviously, the tremendous amount of controversy around Elon Musk, his role in the government versus what he, according to analysts, should be spending more time on, that company, as the stock has just gotten hammered. Curiously, I notice none of that line of questioning had anything at all to do with the reason Brad loaded up on Tesla stock and sold Uber, which was what Tesla was doing with autonomy, the generalized solution and the distinction between what everyone else was doing versus Tesla and the long-term implications. And spoiler alert, since Brad made this announcement, Tesla's officially said, we're going to be launching our autonomous vehicles first in Austin in June. So that's a massive positive milestone. Tesla's still on track. In fact, maybe even sooner than people were expecting. So Scott's question here, also known as blah blah Elon Bad, seems entirely unrelated to the reasons that Brad bought Tesla stock in the first place, announced on CNBS that he'd bought it and why he'd bought it and that he'd sold Uber stock. The case for Tesla autonomy has become even more bullish and it's just around the quarter. Bro, it's now April. I'm not very good at math, but let's count, ready? It's in April now, so May, that's one month. June, that's two months. A couple of months from now, Tesla intends on launching their robotaxi service in Austin. This question from Scott almost seems to suggest is Elon Musk helping out the Department of Government Efficiency somehow change the story on autonomy? What? I suspect Brad's about to say words to that effect. Hey, dickhead, uh, that stuff's irrelevant. They're on track with autonomy. Nothing's changed. Very happy with the investment. Yeah, listen, um, we weren't big in either of these names, as I said at the time. I think the big news, Scott, was that I was a long time uh, and large shareholder of Uber. And starting in the spring of last year, when we saw full self-driving, um, you know, 12.3, and then by the end of the year, 12.9, uh, we just knew autonomy was here. And, you know, I, I have a, a new Tesla Model S I bought in December. It drives me everywhere. I tweeted about it the other day. I don't touch the steering wheel. Um, I think it's quite extraordinary. In fact, I think Faber tweeted something or said something on air that got tweeted over the weekend about how he experienced it. And, and, and so I'm absolutely convinced RoboTaxi is coming. It's coming from Waymo. It's coming from Tesla. And it's coming from others around the world and, and many in China um, that Uber is partnering with around the world. And I, I, I think this does pose a risk fundamentally to the Uber business model. Now, listen, Dara Kasher Shah, he's an amazing CEO of that company, is taking the steps necessary to forge the partnerships um, around the world. They've announced partnerships with several companies in China um, and, you know, and companies outside of China. I just don't have the confidence yet that that has fully come together and is really going to be able to stand up to the full stack solution that Tesla has. Critically important point here from Brad. Tesla's completely vertically integrated autonomy. If we put everything else to the side for a moment, if the only thing you knew is that Tesla's doing everything themselves, full stack, completely vertically integrated for their robotaxis. And every other company on earth, including some players like Uber, are partnering. It's obvious from the outset who's going to have the lower cost, which they can pass on to consumers. It's the company that's fully vertically integrated. Companies don't partner for free. And even if they did, there's additional overhead because they aren't fully vertically integrated. There's more friction. That alone means companies like Uber, big trouble. Then, of course, there's the other piece of the puzzle, which is Tesla's dedicated cyber cap entering production give or take sometime next year. Tesla's one of the only companies on the planet today profitably producing electric vehicles at scale. And I mean literally one, I can count on half a hand the number of companies actually making money selling electric vehicles today. I'm not exaggerating. And Tesla's next gen vehicle, the CyberCab, dedicated RoboTaxi, has a whole new manufacturing system that's going to dramatically lower the cost to produce it. Tesla calls it the unbox process. This means that Tesla's going to be able to put a RoboTaxi on roads for a fraction, a literal fraction the cost of any other company who then may go on to partner with a company like Uber. This is what we call an unassailable cost advantage. And spoiler alert, when consumers are thinking about a service such as, let's see here, their electricity service, their internet service, their gas service, most consumers give approximately zero fucks what company produces or offers this service and give all the fucks about what it costs. Tesla's going to be able to charge the lowest fare per mile, at least outside of China, 
for their service. And they will because it's directly in line with their mission, which is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, which means more electric miles equals less internal combustion engine miles. I guarantee you it's a limiting factor for Tesla lowering their cost per mile for consumers to use their dedicated cyber cab and their existing vehicles operating part-time in their robotaxi fleet will be wait times. And believe it or not, far less cyber cabs are required to completely own entire cities than most people would think. Really rough numbers. This is ballpark stuff. For roughly every million residents living in the city, you need approximately 15 to 20,000-ish ride-hail vehicles to own the entire market, not a portion, the entire market. That includes taxis, Ubers, whatever. As I recall this, Tesla's producing roughly 5,000 vehicles per day. Three days of production if they were just producing cybercabs, and they can literally dominate and own an entire 1 million population city. My point is that Tesla's not actually going to need to wait that long between first cybercabs operating in a particular region and completely saturating the market, at which point they can dramatically lower the cost per mile because wait times won't blow out. And I suspect Tesla will systematically focus on city after city after city strategically in the US, supplement some of the robotaxis with the existing fleet for people to opt in. Meaning, they're going to aggressively drive their cost per mile down and companies like Uber, the massive cost disadvantage, companies like Waymo, massive cost disadvantage are fucked. We're not big in either name today, um, right? Uh, Tesla has its own challenges with the hey, global Brad, recession. Josh, let me, uh, let, let me, let me yes. interrupt you because I really want to make sure the viewers get your yes. take on this. I'm of the opinion that uh, the consumer wants the lowest price and the fastest pickup. When Okay, so I've got to stop. Correct. That's absolutely correct. Lowest price, fastest pickup. But people will typically pay a slightly higher price for a faster pickup than pay a lower price for a long wait. In the most extreme example, let's say it's going to cost you 20 cents per mile, but you've got to wait three hours. Most people won't do that. They'll just take public transport instead. So this is absolutely on point. The question is, which company will be able to solve the wait time problem? Meaning they have enough vehicles on roads in a particular city. Because the company that can do that can then drive costs down. And obviously the lower the cost, the more people will use the service, meaning the more vehicles you need to provide. And as I mentioned earlier, the answer to this will be Tesla. I don't think people really appreciate Tesla's going to focus aggressively on strategic markets one after the other and just saturate. Bam. Okay. We own Austin. We own Dallas. We own Miami. We own Phoenix. Tick, 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 tick. It's not going to take that much production of CyberCab. The example I gave before was to have 100% market share. They don't even need that because it's going to take time for consumers to adopt Tesla CyberCabs. This is going to be massive. It's so important to understand. It's absolutely correct. And if you're ever confused, refer once again to Tesla's mission statement. They absolutely will drive their cost down as fast as possible. Much like today, they're one of the only companies making money selling electric vehicles and making more money per electric vehicle sold than anyone else. In the future, they're going to be the only company or one of the only companies making any money offering autonomous rides and making much higher profits. And importantly, that will allow them to dramatically drive their cost per mile down. And they summon any ride hailing situation. If you go on the uh, Tesla app because you're into Tesla or you love Elon Musk or you care about the battery or whatever, and it's 13 minutes away, isn't it more likely that you won't do that a second time? You'll start off on an app that has both autonomous and Teslas and everything else, and you'll get the fastest ride for the lowest price. And if you agree with that, yeah. would that explain why Tesla is down 35% year to date while Uber is up? Yes, I think that's a. I think it's a very fair point. Um, listen, Thank you. I think if you look at it, in the, if you look at it in the full arc, um, we sold our t we sold our Uber closer to eighty dollars a share, um, and it you know it bottomed at sixty. It's now back back to seventy. Tesla's down a lot. Like I said, um, you know, like net net, I'm 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 happy with the way we manage those positions, and I still think we're in a place where we can't really definitively. Uh, answer the question. We do know that Tesla is going to launch a really great solution. But to your point, Josh, if they don't have speed of pickup in Austin when they launch in June, and if they don't have the lowest price, then there is no market for them, right? So big picture, this is true, but I do need to add a caveat. Early on, given the astronomical numbers of Tesla fanboys and fangirls, many of whom are currently watching this video, love you guys and girls, early customers will actually be willing to not only pay a massive premium, but also wait just to try the service. That of course won't last, but that initial goodwill is certainly going to be on display. This is going to be perfect because it's going to allow Tesla to start deploying their initial cyber caps and people will be happy to wait as long as they fucking need to and pay whatever they need to just to try it out. But here's the key. If Tesla can scale production of their cyber cap, all they need to do is saturate a single city and uh, spoiler alert, there's a factory in Austin and Austin's the first city for cyber cabs. So Tesla's most likely to start deploying Model Ys, maybe and threes initially for their robotaxi service. But then when the dedicated cyber cabs start rolling out, like I said, 
they only need fifteen to 20,000 of those things in Austin and they have the whole fucking city to themselves. And that's obviously not going to be their goal. Let's give you guys an extreme example. If Tesla needed to put 20,000 cyber cabs on the road in Austin, they don't. That would be more than 100% of the market, but let's just play along. If they were producing about 220 per day, which is fuck all. Again, the company globally, roughly 5,000 vehicles per day produced now. 200 vehicles a day, 90 days later, they've owned the whole fucking market. This is nowhere near as challenging as people are going to expect. Now, it'd be different if Tesla was going to roll out their cyber cabs everywhere at once, but they're not. They're not dumb. And I don't think most people appreciate how quickly they were able to saturate key markets one after the other after the other with their experience in mass manufacturing, compelling affordable electric vehicles. Cyber cab is going to be ramping up super quick. Tesla can just go bam, 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 bam. Waymo and Uber are already there. Right. And that's what this game is about. It's about price and it's about convenience. But we've seen Waymo gain tremendous market share in Los Angeles, in San Francisco. The net promoter scores are even higher than a a ride with a human in them. Right. We see parents all over San Francisco that are getting their kids to after school activities in Waymo's with no drivers. They actually prefer it to an Uber with a driver. So I believe that autonomy is here. I believe that we're going, you know, the technological challenge of full self-driving has been cracked. I think Tesla is in a great position on that, but they have to execute, just as you said. Waymo's in a good position on it, but they're still subscale. And the real question around Uber was, can they find the partnerships and solutions that allow them to compete with Waymo and with Tesla? And I will tell you, I just met with the company the other day. I have more confidence today that they're moving in that direction. We actually uh-huh. have a small slice of, of Uber in our portfolio today that we've added right over the course of the past few weeks on some of these pullbacks. But again, I just want to say very clearly, our position sizes are small. We're heading into what could be a recession that could dwarf all of these debates. And secondarily, I don't think it's clear either way. Josh, you and I can't say definitively today which model is ultimately going to win. We have to wait and see what happens. Well, they can't, but I will. Tesla's going to win. Put a fucking pin in it, bitches. By the way, to some that might sound arrogant, but it's not arrogant if it's true. They have a massive cost advantage. Their technology is completely distinct from what companies like Waymo are doing. So put them to side. Waymo's fucked. Uber's fucked. Lyft's fucked. Taxis are fucked. You're not going to be able to compete with Tesla on cost. They're going to be upscale faster than any other company. It's G fucking G. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more? Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more? Don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.